Hey, what's up? Hi, Devin. Can you hear me okay? I'm, gonna- I'm like sweating. This is going to be fun. It's about okay. to get real. Even if it is against your religion, it should have no place in who can get married. I don't agree with a national mask mandate. I think it is a disservice to have misinformation around this. I'd love to hear what she thinks, Francesca, not what Tucker Carlson thinks. Not, you know. We love black people. There would not, not be all the Americans. The United- who says I'm just giving you my opinion. Justice. This is my turn to say, let Abigail finish. <laughs> I don't. You can't solve a problem with another problem, and yeah. a paper straw is a problem. <laughs> another problem. <laughs> another problem. <laughs> Thank you. Unfortunately, the law is not applied evenly. Black people being anything. oppressed since the they very beginning of they America. Are free. And We're don't not. have a temper tantrum just because <laughs> a black woman right. who's not right. acting right. oppressed is oh going to respond to you. Oh God! Oh, oh God! Oh Wait, let's, let's take care. a second. Okay. And we decide to buy something else. I gotta go. I know it, Ricky. Shall we rock and roll, everybody? Welcome to the Adulting Podcast. I'm Zach Peter, a naturally platinum blonde podcaster, author, and sassy self-improvement addict spewing all those burning questions you're too afraid to ask. And I'm Abigail Freyer, an unfiltered boss babe, daylighting as a lifestyle guru, stirring the pot on social issues. We're here to help you look cute, live well, work hard, and stay woke. Together, Together, let's let's conquer conquer adulting. adulting. Welcome back to Adulting, everybody. I'm Zach Peter. And I'm Abigail Freyer. How you doing, boo? Uh, I'm good. I'm excited. I'm nervous, but excited. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, all the emotions. I'm excited. I know. Yeah, we're both like very excited because today's special episode of the Adulting Podcast, we've got a very, um, a very fun topic that we all love to fight about at the dinner table on Thanksgiving, and that's <laughs> politics. Should yes. we vote for Sleepy Joe? Should we vote for Trump? Is it time for a national mask mandate? Is global warming the cause of Donald Trump's tan? We're going to be breaking it all down today. But one thing we're not going to be doing is fighting like a bunch of real housewives. We all have a lot of passion, but today we're going to be channeling our compassion. We believe everybody's voice deserves to be heard. Our mission on this show has always been to empower you to make whatever decision you feel is the best decision for you in your life. And in this case, your entire country. No pressure. But we want you to use your vote consciously. We want you to be smart about it, which is why we've scoured the land, or at least all of Instagram, and DM'd some of the savviest Americans to have an open and candid convo about our country and the issues that are gravely affecting it. So, without further ado, please welcome today's panel of political junkies. First up, he's known for his outlandish outfits, even named one of the most outrageous Grammy outfits in history by Al Magazine. And his outfits are just as bold as his fight for freedom. He's got a new single out called American Rebel, and that he is. Please welcome Billboard Top 40 recording artist, Ricky Rebel. Hey, everybody. How you doing, Ricky? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me on the show, Zach. I'm excited to do this. Next up, joining the conversation, we have a host with many credits from Newsbroke to the Young Turks to Red, What, and Who on MSNBC. She'll infect you with laughter quicker than any virus ever could. Please welcome comedian Francesca Fiorentini. Hey, best intro ever. Hi, how are you? Welcome to the Adulting Podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, don't mention that I was incredibly late and part of adulting <laughs> is responding to your, uh, y- you know, your Google calendar invites, but that's fine. We're here. We're here. We're talking about the election and politics. That's what matters, as is infecting people with laughter almost as bad as coronavirus. I wish that COVID gave you just like a fit of giggles and then you're like, tight. Next up, we have a number one Billboard recording rock artist who identifies as pro American as a pro American Afro Latina that loves life just as much as she loves some vegan cookies. Please welcome the author of Kick Ass Conservative, Joy Vila. Welcome. Oh, hi, good to be here. This is going to be fun. Oh, it fun. is. Um, And last but not least, we have one more musician and an actor. He fell in love with Moe's and now knows a lot about life. And he's here to give us his declassified American survival guide. He's gotten a lot hunkier and a lot more woke since his days as Ned Bigby. Please welcome Devin Warkhazer. What's up, guys? Hey. How you doing, Devin? I'm great, man. Excited to talk with you guys this morning. It's not in studio, but we're doing the best we can as we're all <laughs> navigating different time zones. Pandemic creativity, man. Right? right? Yeah. We're making it work. 
So before sure we are. dive into the convo and get to, to each of the issues, we like to start each episode off with a fun segment called Espresso Yourself, which Abigail is going to kick off for us. Yes. So it's just a little bit of an icebreaker today. We're tweaking it a little bit for our conversation. So I'm going to have you guys finish two sentences for me. The first one is I was born and raised in blank. The second is my political affiliation is blank because blank. So I'll start it and then we'll just go around uh, this fake circle we have going on. (laughs) (laughs) But not fake news. Not fake news. No, none of that today. Okay. (laughs) Um, So I'm Abigail. I was born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, My political affiliation is that I am independent of a political party because I uh, do have some agreeances with the Republican Party and I do agree with some things on the Democratic side. Uh, So I don't, I can't give it to either. (laughs) Nice. I'm Zach. I was born and raised in Los Angeles. So yes, I'm a little vain. As you can tell, my hair is bleached and I have a fake tan on right now. Um, Born and raised in LA. I am also like Abigail, an independent voter. I consider myself like a free thinker. I don't vote red or blue. I vote based off of the issues and how I think they are going to to affect me, my community, and then my country at large. So that's me. Devin, how about you? I, my name is Devin. I, I'm an alcoholic. What? I'm an alcoholic. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you got it. Um, I was born in Atlanta, Georgia, and then spent a lot of my life in LA. Um, yeah, my political affiliation is just, uh, I'm independent. I'm not registered as any party. Um, I, I, humanity, because uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> you love people. I don't know. I, I, I stopped registering as a Democrat um, because. Because uh, I, I think both parties are messed up, but I usually vote Democrat right there with because you. <laughs> sadly they're the lesser of two evils for me. Joy. Ooh. Hi, my name is. We got Joy. the eye rays already. Oh, that's the first. I'm gonna like. <laughs> we should do a drinking game with. Uh... <laughs> yeah, right. I'm like, I, so my name is Joy Vila. So I was born in California, but raised in California and New York, and I was raised Democrat, but my dad was Republican. I voted for Trump. I voted for Obama. I was independent. I voted for Trump. I was independent. Now I'm registered Republican because they are definitely the lesser of two evils for me. And Mm -hmm. I'll tell you why as we talk about it. Okay. And Ricky? Uh, I was born in uh, Los Angeles, California, and I've lived there my whole life. And I consider myself to be a Republican conservative slash... I don't know. I, I think I'm a right wing centrist to be very specific. I'm a right wing centrist or right leaning, not right wing, right leaning centrist. Is that clear? Yeah. Yes. So I'm like, right. I'm in the middle, I'm in the middle, but I'm kind of, I kind of veer off a little to the right. Is that clear? So I have views on the left and views on the right, but I tend to go a little bit more towards the right. Um, and that wasn't always the case. Um, growing up, I was in the industry for a very long time, very liberal, Hollywood-minded uh, type of person. So I believe in freedom of expression, freedom of speech, and all of these great freedom to wear what you want, um, have sex with who you want if it's you know legal and consensual and all that stuff. Um, I'm very open in that way. But when it comes to like finances and you know safety and things like that, I'm conservative. Um, so yeah. Don't touch my money, government. Don't touch my shit. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Are we allowed to cuss on here? I don't want yes. to. Oh, all- honey, yes. yes. It's, it's adulting. <laughs> We're all adults It's adulting. Here. Right? We can handle a little adult language. We're trying to be adults, right? We're, we, we're all trying. It's what we're trying to we're do. We're all trying. Yeah, It exactly. is hard. Actually, I'm glad to be an adult because when I was a kid, I got no respect. I was always that kid who was like, why do you look at me as a kid? I'm an adult already, but you know, you're in a little body. I couldn't You're like that old soul. One day. I thought 14 was the age of like adult because I was 11. I was like, one day I'll be 14 and they'll respect me. It's funny. You were that and now, Yeah. And now you're a grown adult and half of the oh, world true. doesn't respect you, especially like on Twitter and in the oh, comment section. Crazy, right? Yeah. 
Okay, so how today's conversation is going to go. So we, Abigail and I, have taken um, some of the biggest issues that we're kind of facing in our country right now, and we've divided them up into... So instead of asking questions, what we've taken are two very... um, Polar opposite opinions. Polar opposite opinions and statements Mm -hmm. from both conservative and uh, liberal, the liberal side. And so we're going to round table it at random, select one, react to it honestly, and just say, do we agree with it? Have we heard it in our community? And if we don't agree with it, why? And these are, again, we've divided it half and half. So half of them are very liberal, half of them are very conservative, and we're just going to react very honestly and candidly to them. We'll go in a round table. So whoever pulls out the, whether it's me or Abigail, Mm -hmm. whoever pulls it out, we'll start, and then we'll go Devin, Ricky, Joy. Okay. Great. Awesome. Do you want to start? I'm going to let you take this one away. (laughs) Please, all you. First one is, you shouldn't have to bake a cake for a gay wedding if it goes against your religion. Ooh, that's a good one. I feel like this one is very... I think I feel like it's very complicated um, because I as feel, is everything, as is everything, I know, everything's multifaceted. Isn't <laughs> yeah, it? I feel like I mean, the hard or I feel like the really um, challenging, difficult part with this one is I feel like I believe in like the freedom to like, look, if you want to put a sign outside of your business that says no shirt, no service, like I get it. You have the right to be able to do that. I think the. When it came, because I remember when this story first broke out into the news a couple of years ago, I think you kind of have to find a middle ground where like if you're a gay couple and you want to go to this bakery, if that's their if that's where they stand, then I feel like you kind of have to respect that. And at the same time, like if you're a business offering it to the public, to the free public, then I feel like. I don't know. You got to you got to take every customer that kind of comes in. I mean, I think it's a case by case basis, but I think there's a little wiggle room with both of them. Devin, are you are you baking um, any any gay cakes anytime soon? I'll bake you a gay cake right now, Zach. Um, <laughs> no, no, very, it's in the I, oven. Very sexual. And I'm not against it. Um, is he baking yeah. a cake in his oven? <laughs> <laughs> so can we see? I, I mean, what I disagree with is that that gay marriage would be against anyone's religion. Mm-hmm. Um, like, yeah, if you own a business, I, I do think like. I don't know. You get to deny people if you want to. It's it's your business. And if you're a gay couple wanting homophobes to bake your wedding cake, like don't go to them. Um, right. But what I disagree with is that this whole notion that gay marriage is against anyone's religion and that these people would be homophobic at all in such a in such a way. Um, but but forcing them to bake a cake doesn't seem like the answer to me. Like forcing them. To, yeah, forcing them to bake a cake doesn't seem like an answer to me. Yeah. Um, but their their basis for not wanting to bake a cake is dumb to me and wrong and doesn't make any sense. On that, if I can touch on that, I totally yeah. agree with where you're coming from, Devin. However, on an idea or platform of religion, if somebody's religion is that that gay marriage is wrong. But Christianity they, doesn't. I- well, I, but, hey, no, I, I'm not saying not that. about Christianity. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not. I, I don't believe that. And I'm a Christian right. and I, I've left my church because of that. I've read some but, pretty intense verses. I've so. sucked a few dicks. But, I'll just yeah, say that. But I, that's, <laughs> that's where my perspective but, but, comes in. My whole point is like on on your topic, even if it is uh, against your religion, it should have no place in who can get married legally like separation right. of church and state like why are we even who fucking cares what your religion is like i don't care right like, yeah that, believe what I you want to believe in your house but that shouldn't take that shouldn't affect other people's right lives. that's interesting i mean that goes into yeah. the point of like don't force these people to like the government shouldn't force these people to bake that cake but the government also shouldn't dictate right. like if these people can get married or get not. married a hundred percent yeah it's a hard one it's a hard one how are you feeling ricky I used to, I mean, growing up like around 2014 era, like I was very ultra liberal. My music, I wrote a song called Boys and Sometimes Girls. I was very ultra liberal. And I, I remember writing like a, a thesis on why, why they should bake the cake. You know, I thought it was wrong. And I thought like, you know, what the hell? Like you start a business and someone wants to get a cake, you know, just make them the cake. It's not a big deal. But then as I, you know, grew up and 
started observing more conservative uh, viewpoints, I started realizing why, uh, where they're coming from, where they're coming from. It's against, it's, it's against their own, like it, they consider it to be a sin and that's, that's fine. They can, not, to me, I don't think that's fine, but it, they're free to think that, right? Everyone's free to think what they want, but they just feel, unco- they feel like it, uh, very uncomfortable doing that. It's like asking someone who hates Trump to like, you will make a Trump cake for me. Right. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like yeah. you will do this because right. I mandate because, because the court tell you know what I mean? Right. So they feel, so I get, I, as much as I, I'm super not, I don't like homophobes. I don't like people that, that hate gay people. You know, I, I definitely advocate for, for LGBT rights and, and, and I want that for us and, yeah. and always to protect it. But then there's that other side of the, of the coin, you know, where they're coming from. Cause I remember even recently there was something that happened where, a gay person, uh, I guess it was, the, it was something else. It was about adoption or whatever, or uh, maybe it was just the cake coming back again. You know, it comes every in waves, you know? And I told my, my stylist about this and I, she's super liberal. Sup- she was super for Bernie, but now I flipped her to Trump, but that's another story. Anyway, <laughs> nice. anyway, <laughs> I red filled her. But anyway, at the time she was like, oh, Ricky, Oh, 100%. You can't tell me that I have to do anything. I don't have to do anything as a stylist or as a, you know, designer. She doesn't have to make any type of design. Like if, if somebody comes in there and says, I want a devil cake. I want satanic, you know, babies and dying and stuff. Like you, you can't <laughs> force people. So I, I, I'm twisted. I'm completely. Well, like you also have to be open. If, if you deny them, you have to be open for the backlash that that causes too. For yeah, that, the free, let the free right. market, the point right. is at the end of the exactly. day, let the free market capitalist, uh, capitalism decide it because a lot of people are going to find out that this guy is like not serving gay people. So they're going to go to the cake people that, that are, are if they, if they, if they want to support that, mm-hmm. the free market sure. capital, capitalism will decide all of that. Um, yeah. I, that's my, yeah. Can I ask a question? Like what I just thought, because I do feel like you can't like, even though I disagree with that person, you can't force someone to do it. But then at the same time, now I'm thinking like, but what about some racist bakery that says, I'm not going to bake you a cake cause you're black. Like exactly. Wh- right. What, that's what, what I'm about too. That? If you're going to go, if you're going to go one way, you got to go all the way. No divorce, so, no divorces, no divorcees, yeah. no people that wear, plaid on okay, Sunday, so me, no people that eat sh- yeah. shellfish, right? You so, know, Joy, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, let me say my thoughts. So first of all, the, it's a really good topic, Devin, because you said, well, what about if someone's racist? So these are two different things. One is discrimination. One is religious freedom. So religious freedom is protected. This America was built. I'm a Christian as well. And I support LGBT rights a thousand percent, you know, Um, and uh, I wouldn't refuse service to someone because they're gay. Uh, I wouldn't refuse service to someone because they're Muslim, you know, but just like a Muslim bakery, if you took this to, I think this became a huge media topic because it was Christians and they were, I guess, white. And it's, you know, it's very trendy to hate on white Christians and to be like, oh, they're bigots and whatnot. But you could take a gay couple could go to a Muslim bakery and just the same, they would say, no, we're not going to make you a cake because in our religion, we don't support that. So I believe in religious freedom. That's protected. That's our first amendment, right? And that means that if your religion doesn't support something, you don't have to do it. You shouldn't be forced to do something that you don't want to, especially if you're a business, you have the right to refuse service to anyone for any reason and that. And listen, if I was that gay couple or if I walked in and I said, I want a Trump cake or I want a a Christian cake and this and the bakery said no we don't support that I would take my business elsewhere I'm not going to give you my money anyways I'm like why fight a battle against people that you're not going to change them and they're they were probably not hateful about it I don't think those Christians were hateful about it I think they were just like hey listen sorry these are our morals they were respectful because there was like follow-up interviews where they were like listen we're so sorry we love you but we're just like a lot of Christians are like hate the sin not the sinner I don't believe it's a sin. I support my LGBT brothers and sisters and their right to marriage. And to me, they're, they're no different than straight people. Uh, I believe God created us all equal. But if somebody is very strict, Christian, Muslim, uh, there's other different religions where they don't uh, you know, necessarily recognize same-sex couples, that's their right. Take your business elsewhere. It's just like if I have a Trump hat on and you're going to discriminate against me or you don't like me because 
I have natural hair or I'm light skin or whatever reasons, even if you don't tell me, if I get a, a, a distinct, clear attitude that you're not going to give me the 100% excellent service, I ain't paying you. So for that gay couple, I'm on their side, take your business elsewhere. But for the Christian couple on the bakery, you have a right. That's part of your religious, you know, uh, agreements. And that's your business. You don't have to serve anyone. But uh, they weren't discriminating. They weren't saying, get the hell out of here because you're gay, right? F mm -hmm. off. Like that would have been clear discrimination. They're just like, hey, listen, we're sorry. This is our code. This is our religious mandate. You know, we love you, but we're not going to bake a cake for that. I, I up. Their, their Let me say one thing. Can I say yeah. one thing? Also, like, it seems like they always target Christians too. Like the gay community, LGBT, uh, act, radical activists. They always go after Christians. Like, they don't always, but I'm just saying in general, it seems like they, they go after Christians a lot. But what about the Muslims? You know, why don't you try getting married a Muslim bakery by a Muslim? The same thing. Why, why don't you go to a Muslim bakery and sue the Muslim bakery? I, well, I think there there happens to there's be probably a lot more Christian Christians bakeries. In there, are, right. there are more Christians in America. And I think that they, they, the Christians it matter. in America. Fight, no, no, no. Fight, no but what I'm saying matter. is, no, no. But if to you're your gonna point, fight, if you're going to fight for, 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 if you're going to fight for LGBT to have rights to get a cake if they ask for one. Go but, after, go to a Muslim one too. You're, you're, I don't think they no, should go to any but, religious yeah. bakery. I don't there think they like should. 20, period, there's like 25 bakeries like in that city. Don't go to a freaking <laughs> religious bakery if you already know. I'm not going to go to a religious bakery and I'm a Christian. I'm going to go to a bakery. Yeah, that's a religious bakery. I'm not advocating for that. For me to do that, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to go to a bakery. Right. That, 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 that wants to buy, I'm going to take my money where it is. But right. these guys, they I'm just so, I'm, I'm curious as to why they always focus on the Christians. Right. And, I, and that's what I'm trying to, but that's what I'm trying to answer. The Muslims that's or, what I'm trying to answer so, for you. That's what I'm trying to respond to. So I think the reason that they go after Christians so much is because Christians are more than Muslims in a lot more media, a lot more vocal. And they're, you know, predominantly, I mean, it's ar arguably that is one of the, the biggest religions here in America. And I think because it is so common, because we all know that, I mean, most of us have that one Christian friend. I, and I grew up half Catholic, half Christian. So I, you know, I understand it. I think we're all kind of on the same wavelength of, okay, a business has their independent right to choose who they right. serve based on religious topics. However, does an adoption agency have the right to tell someone you're gay, you cannot adopt here? Right. Well, that's and adopt one. you that's another one. unless it's a religious disagree. adoption agency. Right. I don't think they should. But right. but do you think that a religious adoption agent like you, you think that well, yeah, should be like option? a Muslim adoption? Do you think Muslims? Wanna, we have, wanna, to, we have to keep bringing up to Muslim. Why we have to keep if it's a Christian. Reason, if it's a Buddhist adoption. I mean, if your whole no, I'm asking any religion, sure. any religion. If it's a religious affiliated adoption agency, you think sure. that if if Zach or Ricky wanted to go in and adopt, they should say no. I'm not, not, would, I'm, not gay. I'm not gay. I'm not gay. I'm not gay. Religious just, adoption center. Did that joke He's not, not gay. <laughs> He's not gay. I said I'm is. not gay. No, I, but so, so we think that <laughs> that should that should have a have a hold on adoption. I I don't think there should be adoption rules in place like that because I got upset by that one. Need homes. I think that that's really ridiculous. If as long as the family is like going to take care of their kids, I think single parents should be able to adopt. Babies need homes, yeah, and we can't. Yeah. I'm pro life, so we can't be pushing on people to say, um, yeah, uh, you know, don't have abortions, and then not say, but have an adoption if we're going to close adoption places. Agreed. So I personally, I have a child that I adopted out. Um, it saved my life. It saved her life. It was incredible. Mm -hmm situation for me. It's a reason I'm pro-life. So I think that anyone should be able to adopt a kid as long as they can prove they're going to have a healthy um, uh, life for that kid. And that doesn't, that doesn't like hinge on your sexuality. Agreed. Okay. I just want to clear the air there that Trump is pro agencies being able to refuse LGBTQ right. couples and, and Biden is con. And I just, I, that's, yeah, that was why not. I wanted to bring that up. I disagree. I have a comment you. on that. I have a comment on okay. that because I had a problem with that okay when i first heard yeah. about it where okay so the, the story is that they're allowed to deny uh babies to people that aren't their religious de denomination right is that the truth like they're they're saying like if the, the parents aren't coming in as christians and they want to give this baby to a christian home no it's or a not Muslim about home. It's, it's, it's just straight LGBTQ. It doesn't matter what their, their religion. Oh, oh, we're talking about LGBT and, and yeah. not, not, not selling, not giving, not selling, sorry, not giving adopted babies to parents. What is that? 
I have actually, I'm actually not aware of that. I want to look it up. Yeah. Yeah. No yeah. problem. Oh, if it's a, so what it is, it's like, it's not all adoption agencies. First of all, this has to do with the religious no. freedom again, or religious exactly. type of things, right? It's, like it's with freedom. allowing, re- it's a, with allowing religious adoption agencies to deny adoption to LGBTQ. Oh, but you said religious adoption agency. That's why, that's yeah. why I said but religion. So many, oh, well, aren't, that, that's aren't the same. so many no. adoption say, Hey, can you, can you give me a baby? They're going to be like, are you Muslim? There are people out there who want their kids to be raised in a certain religion. Right. So that's the same exact thing as this cake scenario. If you're LGBT, go to an agency that's yeah. not going to have their, their, but if you're, but if you're LGBTQ you. and you're Christian, well then, then there, I'm sure there's agencies that's cause that's a good point. There's a lot yeah, of LGBT. That don't discriminate. That don't discriminate. Go to a place. Yeah, I, I see. Mean, I see. Like, I personally like see it. Like it's like trying to go, it's like going to Whole Foods or Trader Joe's. Like, you know what you're going when you go to that specific market, not to say that there should be any discrimination or not to say right. that there's, you I know, agree. religion should be discriminate against that but I mean I'm kind of on look I'm I this is an issue that affects me because I do want to adopt children one day if I know that a certain agency isn't going to be supporting my family I don't need to go to that agency and that's where it kind of that's where I close the book is I can go somewhere else one last thing on this I don't know enough about this topic but I would imagine plenty of adoption agencies do have religious affiliations and I would imagine plenty of these adoption agencies also takes take tax breaks because of their religious affiliations and they're tied to the state. I bet their adoption agencies get grants and funding from the state. Right. If, and so religious freedom also gets tied into separation of church and state. And in this regard, when it's an adoption agency, that's probably regulated by the government. Um, you, you have to adopt kids to, to worthwhile parents, if, even if they're gay. Oh, I have another thing. So yeah. there's some statistics about, unfortunately that, you know, being raised by a mother and a father is different than being raised by a father and a father or a mother and a mother, where the child, I'm, I'm sorry to say they have a better, um, I, how do I word this so I don't get in trouble? That <laughs> You can get that, in trouble. It's oh, okay. We're, we're all comfortable I, here. I get in trouble all the time, the ideally, Ricky. The all ideally, day. The ideally, you know, there are parents out there who give up their child and they want them to be raised by a mother and a father. And, and, and they should have, I maybe I think they should have the right to do that if they want, you know, yeah. because there, there's difference between being raised between a father and a father and, or a mother and a mother. I was raised by a mother and a father and they met in like junior high and they stayed together for, you know, mm. till now for like 50 plus years. And I, and I love my parents and they adore me. And at the end of the day, it's like, I would, I mean, I don't know who I would be if I was, you know, with two dads or two moms. I don't, it doesn't matter. I, I think that two dads could be amazing, beautiful, great parents as, as, as well as two women. But the point is, is that there are statistics that show this is a very, this is a very controversial thing for me to say, but there, there are statistics out there about how, you know, it might be, um, what is the word? I don't want to say uh, beneficial. I'm just going to say that, that some people think that it's best for the child to be with a mother and a father. Is that, does that clear? Like mm-hmm. to me, I like it always. I think the child should be with, you know, whoever loves it the most. I like it always too. When a kid has <laughs> no parents though, like. That they don't win. That's the worst. Any parent that's is better worst. than no parents. Even yeah. one parent is better. Although I, I prefer two parent household, even if it's the same sex. I'm going to say as someone who has adopted a, a daughter out when I was young and I was in an abusive relationship and it was, it was a terrible situation. I was told that only abortion was the answer until mm-hmm. I looked down and I was crying. I was praying and I saw this ad that said an adoption agency. And I was like, that's it. I can give my baby life. Even if I know I'm not able to give her the, like, li- I can give her the life without raising her right now. And I'll tell you, when I work, I worked with American Adoptions and I 100% got to pick the family. And so I got to pick their religion, their gender. So it depends. It's very tricky because when we say a Catholic adoption agency can deny LGBT, because I looked it up, it's a Catholic adoption agency that is that mm-hmm. Trump says, well, that's the religious freedom, right? Is it the agency or is it the individual people? Because if I was a very strict Catholic, which I'm not, and I said, I only want to give it to a mom and a dad, and, and mm. I, I should be allowed to do that. It's my baby that I'm giving up, giving the ultimate sacrifice for. Now, I think, though, that it shouldn't be straight up that no LGBT parent should have it. I personally wouldn't have 
cared as long as the family was, you know, at the time I wanted educated, I wanted artistic because I knew my baby would be an artist growing up and she is, it's an open adoption. So we need to have those options open and it doesn't, it, it may sound like discrimination when you look at a headline like CNN saying, oh, he supports that, but at the, it, it's individual people who are giving their baby up for adoption and they're choosing, mm. like, I want vegetarian people adopting my kids. Right. You know, am I discriminating against meat eaters? It's being picky. So there's preference and there's, there's prejudice, but they're separate. And I think that the news puts them in the same category. Yeah. I, I mean, the news definitely loves to sensational. And look on both oh, sides. Oh, 100%. CNN just as Which much as Fox. Watch CNN. Yeah. They don't, Fox. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, get my, I'll get my news from the people yelling at me on Twitter. Um, but I think, I mean, I think to close this topic out, I think yeah. none of us want any discrimination against anybody in the LGBTQ plus community. We all yeah. want to support it. We're all going to fight for rights. Sometimes we may not necessarily agree on how we approach that, especially when religion gets involved. Um, mm. Like, look, if you want to suck a dick and you want to love Jesus, like you can do both. Absolutely. You know, <laughs> Abigail, I do. What? <laughs> Abigail Maybe, what's, I don't know. What's Whether the you're next male topic? or female, that's fine. <laughs> all right, Abigail, let's pick the next one. Let's do it. All right. Get another good Jesus one here. I think they're all controversial, so. BLM is a terrorist group. Yeah, that's our disagree. that's our statement. Absolutely, absolutely, hundred percent. Okay, so let's not, round. Not even it. thinking. Not even thinking. Okay, so let's round table it. Devin, Ricky, Joy, Devin, you want to kick it off? I disagree. That's it. I disagree. BLM is go a terrorist for it. group. Let's that's go. It. I disagree. I think. I think there's BLM. The s- the corporation. Like, I think. And then there's BLM the movement. Exactly. Yeah. I think there's Black Lives yeah. Matter, like kind of a loose, I mean, it's sort of organized, but there's like leaders all over it. And there's Black Lives Matter, the movement that right. has swept our nation and many of our hearts. Um, and hearts? and many of our buildings and More labeling like fire. I mean, and are you kidding me? Are you terrorist organization is just they're doing this in the name of blm it's like if i do it in the name of you i mean i'm still who's they who's this model the people who are robbing the black lives matter the people who are rioting the people are rioting down cities they're they're looting they're everywhere everywhere individuals drive black individuals but that everywhere we drive no no everywhere we drive we see we see boarded up places everywhere we drive and they're putting up these posters of black lives matter so that their shit doesn't get raided and and looted okay it's bullshit okay i don't care at the end of the day i don't care how you know you know what there's yes there is the idea of yes black lives matter of course they do because of course they do not yes, of course they as, do. As the, as the one black person here, I'm going to say black lives absolutely matter, but they don't. Not of course me. in this country, though. They what do, do you mean? matter in this country. And, and everything, I'm everything, black there isn't a black. Hey, okay. hold on. Joy. There isn't, there isn't Joy, a white Joy, person. Joy, I want to hear. Thing. Hold, on. hold on. Joy, I want, I want to hear from you. I have been told, thank you, Zach. I've been told, I just was at an event, a pro-America rally in St. Paul, Minnesota, and a Black Lives Matter activist who is white as white can be screamed in my face telling me I'm oppressed. So I'm marching with my friends. We're white. We're Latino. There's more black people on our side than on the Black Lives Matter side. And this white guy screams in my face. He's saying, fuck you. Fuck you to all my friends. He's saying, fuck you to me. And he goes, you're oppressed. You're oppressed. Screaming at the top of his lungs. I said, the only person who's oppressing me right now is you. This is what I hate, is that there's a ton of white people out there patting me on the back and saying, oh, you poor little black thing, let me fight for you. And I go, hey, I want, no, no, shh, shh, quiet. I'm fighting for you. And I resent that as a black woman. I've been black my whole life. I've never taken a day off. Have I felt oppression? Sometimes. Do I see that there are situations that are not fair? Does racism exist? Absolutely. But does it exist to the extent that Black Lives Matter has preached and hit me over the head with? No, I'm not afraid of the KKK jumping out from under my bed to kill me and attack me. And it doesn't have the face of Trump. I tell you that much. It has the face of white liberal men who are screaming in black women's faces and telling us we're oppressed. It's disgusting. They're burning down cities. I saw 1,500 businesses burned down in St. Paul. It's black- funded by Soros. 
businesses. This was in well, a no, that's that's where the corporation. Black immigrants live and work. Somalians and Ethiopians. Fifteen hundred businesses burned down by Black Lives Matter. You can't tell me that Black Lives Matter if you're burning down their homes and their businesses. It's disgusting. The whole thing. The, so the I, bottom line is the bottom line is they're a terrorist organization. They murder cops. They murder people with MAGA hats. They got to stop. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> Yes, they so, do. Okay, uh -huh. so, they have, and, and it's no, no. I'm not saying oh no, as in like oh no, they don't. I'm saying oh no, as in like this is about to get a little. It's about ugly. to get real. No, okay. it's about to so, get real. The violence needs to stop. The violence needs to stop. I don't care what, what, would what, what you what, whatever whatever way. You what want would to you talk say on the flip this, side of that though? The violence needs to stop. That's the bottom line. No more violence. None. None. Zero. Oh. We are not going to mean what it should. It shouldn't even have the, the, the whole thing that we uh, the boarding up and the riots that happened during the summer. Mm -hmm. Joy and I wrote a song about it. it's called "Voice Over Violence" coming out soon. Okay, right. we were so inspired by what was happening by the riots. It's so ridiculous that we had to stay in our homes and we had a curfew because people were pissed off at something and they decided to destroy freaking cities all across the United States. Absolutely. That's not how you fight for and black lives. Absolutely. So, no, that's, but that's, that's my question. Ninety-nine percent of those gatherings were peaceful protests, and then there is a violent extreme they side of it. I want to. Okay, so hold on. I want to interject here. I want to interject here. Hold on. Only because I have cops escalated the violence. Not the police who escalate the violence. I'm about to mute everybody. Okay. Wait. Let's take a second. Time. Hold on. Time. I'm, I'm about to mute everybody. Hold on. So I want to interject here because I feel like I'm somewhere in the middle of this conversation. So I, because we're talking about rioting and protesting and BLM. So I live downtown. So I firsthand experienced the rioting. I ended up getting a lot of backlash on social media for kind of my raw reaction to it. I didn't expect it to hit or I didn't expect it to happen. And I downtown LA, which is where I live, was one of the first kind of places that it did happen. And on. very much, yeah, very much like you, Joy and Ricky, I was very much like, I don't understand how this is justice. I don't understand how this is solving anything for anybody. And then I kind of needed to take some time. I'd left, I ended up leaving my apartment. I had to take some time to kind of just process everything because I had a lot of noise on social media, people being like, oh, screw those, those rioters. And then other people being like, no, you don't understand. We're fighting for justice. And I, you know, need to kind of process those emotions and within a week and a half I was out there protesting and I'll talk about how I got there because I had to learn the distinguish I had to distinguish the movement and the message overall from the small minority and the small fraction of people that are dominating the news and the people that are dominating the news are the ones right. that are looting and that are you know unfortunately taking advantage and hijacking what I think is a, a bigger message that I don't think any of us uh, here disagree with I I don't think anybody here disagrees with the fact that black lives do matter not the organization not the you know the but that's the problem zach why they're using a sentence that everyone can agree with to to cause manipulate violence. The sentence it is manipulation so it's like if I, I mean they they don't care about david dorn who died as a 77 year old cop i wrote about that in my book kick-ass conservative it was a black american cop who was murdered defending a, a a place that was attacked by black lives matter protesters i mean they don't they don't care about the unborn babies who are murdered in the womb who are black americans they don't care about my black life because i'm a conservative like it's 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 at the rhetoric is taken out of control the movement is just as bad as the protesters were not really protesters but rioters are there good people who are protesting for good things like possibly you Devin maybe Abigail like it, yeah I'm not saying you guys are evil for what you do but I'm saying the whole movement has been become so hijacked and so incredibly divisive and violent that even saying black lives matter you're okay. thinking of the of the movement of the of the group who are proud Marxists who come up there and say, we need to burn down the system who say, if you don't raise your fist with us, you know, that we're going to intimidate you or run you over with a car. I mean, it's insanity. And at some point, I don't See, understand why I, Democrats. I think this, so, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is political. Okay, I haven't this spoke thing yet is, though. Wait. I, I, I yeah, feel well, like the average, the average person, what you said, um, identifies with the Marxist BLM 
corporation that is making money that I, again, when I found out that they were making money and it was a corporation, my mind changed a bit about the corporation. However, I think the average person, when you say Black Lives Matter, they don't go to the corporation. They go to the overall meaning that unarmed black people are being killed in a much higher rate than white they're people. They're not though. I think they're not. Though. They are. There were. Four, and what is, what is, look at the actual numbers, Abigail, what, 14. What, no, but let me, let me finish. Also were, with unarmed. your they're protests. Not unarmed. I'm not, with I'm the, not here to say, but the, the numbers don't, are not the same as what. With you the protests numbers. also saying that everyone who's protesting is a part of riots. I was, I protested. Yeah, that's an overgeneralization. Oh, Jesus. For a week sure. straight. I'm not saying everyone um, is. I, I witnessed myself, not through other people, being caved in to areas by cops, by lines of cops, pushing, pushing, pushing people into a square where you can't get out. You cannot get out. You are literally trapped between fucking walls of cops. And then they decide to shoot off because we're not going home. You, you couldn't go home. I literally well, walked almost a damn near a half a mile to get to a, an exit street to get out of an alley. I, I couldn't. And when I tell Were you- Were they I was, rioting at the time? No. This was on off Sunset Boulevard. No, there was no rioting. There were signs. That there's was been it. Rioted, there's been See, riots you can't everywhere. tell me you can't, you can't tell me you don't believe me. You can't, yeah, you can't. I know, no, no, I'm not saying I'm not saying there have been, been riots everywhere. They've been there been there's also quote, been peaceful protests but there's, everywhere. But there's been protests everywhere too. There's been incited protests, violence by cops but, everywhere. But, but you can see it. This is all funded. This is funded by Soros. Who is okay. trying to divide America? Trying to the divide police force isn't funded by Soros. Soros so we can't yes, have a conversation about divided. George Soros here. So, you don't. Yes, none can. of us know him. Of none of us can. know his. Then why are you talking about him? He's he's funding you're, all this I'm stuff not, to try to divide talking, us. I'm saying divide white and black. When in reality, we, we have, have Oprah. Oprah. We love yeah. black people. Americans love black people. We have Because we can speak on like what we know. We have the president of the United States, Barack Obama. No. We love black people. That's Americans right. love, wait a minute, Americans love black people or there wouldn't be, if we didn't think that black lives matter, we don't need to be told that. We love black people. There would not, not be all the Americans. the United States. It doesn't uh, matter. Not all Americans love white matter. people. It does matter. It not does all matter. Americans love, you can't, you can't tell people who to love and, and tell people how to do, live their it, lives. It does this matter. is a free America. You, you, can't, you can't separate the free context. America. You can't separate the context of the history of America from this. You can't separate the context I'm not of black people being anything. oppressed since the they very beginning of they America. Okay, so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interject here. So we have Francesca. Francesca Fiorentini is now joining the conversation. So Francesca, the prompt that we're all candidly responding to to is that BLM is a terrorist group. So do you have any response? I know you're kind of just jumping in hot here, but what is your response to BLM being a terrorist group? I apologize, first of all, that I didn't no hear everyone else. Um, obviously, just a favorite, um, you know, Tucker Carlson talking point uh, bears no weight in reality. It is, if you actually spell out BLM, it's Black Lives Matter, not black people should immediately arm themselves. Although I will say the lack of police reform and the lack of responsiveness from a lot of governors and uh, state officials is basically making it harder and harder to make the case that the police can be reformed. And when you're responding to so many nonviolent calls for um, police reform with more police brutality, uh, and then you have armed militias from the far right who go unchecked. Um, you're kind of in an awful way making this case for, well, people who have AR-15s um, won't be held accountable. Ergo, we should all just be armed? What? No. And yet we, of course, know how that works uh, depending on, you know, what the color of your skin is and black and brown people, when they have been armed, do not get treated the way those right wing white militias do. So anyway, talking point from Tucker Carlson, uh, very, uh, very, very ridiculous. One of the more ridiculous things of 2020, Joy. more than COVID actually. Mm -hmm. Joy, do you have a, do you want to respond? Yeah. I mean, I'd love to hear what she thinks, Francesca, not what Tucker Carlson thinks, you know, um, <laughs> it's, 
I mean, we're all talking about our opinions, not just to bash. You know, we haven't, we're, we don't bring up what other people say, we bring up what we say. You know, I want to hear what a strong, independent woman thinks about it, not Tucker Carlson. He has a TV show. Let's hear what you think, Miss. Oh, is, is BLM? Well, see, I, that, I, I mean, don't. I'm, I'm the one black person on this panel, and I love, I'm going to use my black privilege here. And say like I've I've been told by so many people, so many white people, Latinos, whatever. It's like I, I imagine this is how it feels to be LGBT and have everybody telling you like what's on you, right, Je uh, Zach and Ricky, like what you should think, right? Well, LGBT, and it's like it's infuriating because I've been talked to by mostly talked down upon by mostly liberals. Like Republicans don't really, they may have some ridiculous talking points too. But I am a conservative, but it's because I left the left because the left wouldn't let me speak. You know, feminism says they want to fight for my rights, but not if you're black. You know, Black Lives Matter. I have white people screaming in my face telling me I'm oppressed, telling me what I should think. And I'm here to say you can fight for the rights of all people and all colors without burning cities down, without causing mass chaos. And to the point of the Second Amendment, black people need to arm themselves because that's the great equalizer. Are you kidding me? Of course I'm arming myself because literally the Second Amendment was if the government tries to take away your land or take anything away, you have your gun to say, hell no, you can't come in and take it. And regardless if you're Democrat or Republican, arm yourself. In fact, well, the black Americans are the fastest growing people to buy guns and own guns. And I think that regardless of your political affiliation, that's a great point. Get a gun and use a gun. <laughs> yeah, the Black Panthers did that in the 70s and they were systematically brutalized and undermined by the FBI, murdered in their beds um, and yeah, targeted for arming themselves. So yeah, we do have a history of Black Americans arming themselves and then being that doesn't mean brutalized that by the state. You should not arm themselves. That doesn't mean you shouldn't keep arming yourself. In fact, it's the great equalizer and only someone who is racist would say, yeah, don't give black Americans guns. Like whether you're the CIA, I'm not friends of the CIA. I'm not friends of the government. You know, that's why I'm a conservative. I don't want big government control. I want the constitution. And that's our right does not say only white people can own guns in the constitution. Absolutely. Unfortunately, oh. the law is not applied evenly, but yeah, in that, in a, in a perfect America, you'd be right. So uh, on my end, um, BLM, I am here for the movement. I'm here for what it stands for. I like to separate myself from the corporation. I think that that's something that we're not discussing right now. I think we're discussing the movement and we're not talking about Marxist beliefs or anything like that because what all I'm caring about is that there is an overwhelming amount of energy put into something so people can be heard and so that changes are made. Do you think that anyone would be aware of half the shit going on right now if all this hoopla did not happen and did not start and all these protests did not happen? Like it's it's a huge wake up for a lot of America. Devin? Um, this country does not treat uh, all races equal from the history to now. Um, Police do not treat protests equally, as we've seen in the last many months. And um, yeah, to meet protests, peaceful protests about not the looting ones, not the riot ones, to meet peaceful protests about police brutality with intense levels in every city brutality. in America of police brutality. To meet police brutality protests with more police brutality shows shows where America is and its inability to change and hear this feedback and reform itself. And that's where the Black Lives Matter movement exists. And uh, yeah, it's important. Joy? I, I mean, I appreciate all different sides of the story. I love hearing other things. I love hearing from Devin and Abigail and, and to hear, you know, Zach and Ricky and, and Francesca, I didn't get to hear much from you, unfortunately, but I love hearing all different sides. I think that's what makes this country great is that we can support one another and have different opinions. I always say, you don't have to agree with me, but you're going to respect what I have to say. And being someone uh, who's been a woman of color my whole life and seeing this incredible divide in races. I mean, I remember when you couldn't buy an American flag after September 11th because they were sold out. I remember when we were unified, when we were like, we are Americans first. And I want to go back to that time where we look at not just the color of our skin. And now are there injustices that happen? Absolutely. But if you look at the numbers, it doesn't, it doesn't excuse the 
pillaging the uh, burning down black businesses. I mean, I went there, broke my heart in St. Louis where 1500 businesses were burned down and the mayor mm. told the police officers to stand down. So they burned down the police department. And that means immigrants, black American immigrants from Africa who uh, are from Somalia and from Ethiopia, 1500 businesses in, in St. Paul uh, in, 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 were burned down. And it, if that were to happen in Los Angeles, because there's so many wealthy people, we wouldn't allow that. But I lived in, in Hollywood not too long ago on, on Hollywood Boulevard and the CVS got, got robbed. And it may not be the Black Lives Matter entity who's, who's, or maybe the movement, but the movement has been hijacked. And we cannot, it's just like saying, oh, well, there's some good white people who just want white power who are, who are not killing people. You know, some members of the KKK are great. No, the movement and what it stands for is hate and destruction. And no matter what they try to tell us, Marxism, communism, and, uh, uh, you know, socialism is never going to be the right way for Americans. And Black Americans will get, continue to get hurt in the short end of the stick. So the movement's been hijacked, but it is hijacked and we have to face that. Ricky? There isn't anything that a black person cannot be that a white person can be. There isn't anything that a white person can be that a black person cannot be. Anything is possible for a black person. It doesn't matter what color skin you have. It matters what's up in here and what's in here. You can accomplish anything that you want in your life if you're black. There's nothing you cannot achieve. And that is the message we need to tell our children, not that they are oppressed, not that they are less than, that's racist, or because of the past, that they are something now. Screw the past. The past does not exist. The only thing that happens is in the present and the future. And if you invent something as a possibility, I'm talking to black children right now, and any brown children like me, I'm Latino, okay? I'm supposedly a person of color. Your skin color means nothing. Do you understand me? Nothing. The only thing that means something is what's going on in your heart and in your brain. You can achieve anything in your life if you put your mind and your heart into it and you work hard enough. And that's the American dream, okay? We have this thing called the Constitution that we invented so that you're free to do those things, so you can become the president like Barack Obama, so that you can become Oprah, so you can become Beyonce, you can become LeBron James. You can do anything with your life. So don't let anybody tell you that your life doesn't matter or that it's less than or that you need to be reminded. You don't need to be reminded. You need to know in your heart that that is the truth because that is the truth. Stop living in the past. We do not live in the past. We are in the future. And we have a president right now who is doing a lot of things to help you. And I know that the CNN and the MSNBC is trying to tear that down and try to tell you that that's a lie. He's done so much for the black community. He's done so many things to help the black community. You just need to research it with people who are telling the truth. Okay. And that's why he has so many black supporters. All right. And I get really upset when I hear that people are telling these children, okay, that they have to live that because of the, the things that happened in the past that they have nothing to do with, that I have nothing to do with, you all have nothing to do with. Yes, it's not, a, nothing's perfect. We've all been oppressed. And all of our cultures have been oppressed by other cultures. That's, that's human. Right. That's, that's happened since the dawn of humankind. We need to focus on what we can do now in the present to make everything better and not act like victims because you're not a victim. Uh, Francesca, do you have any uh, very brief closing words so that we can close out this topic? (laughs) Yeah, look, I just, I I definitely want to appreciate the the sentiment and um, the wish that uh, we are all equal and the wish that we can live up to this country's constitution. I do share that wish. I really do. But I am someone who believes that history matters and that believes that while we don't have to be tied by it, we have to learn from it and we have to know how we are still suffering under legacies of colonialism, of slavery, of inequality, of the ways that we haven't been true to what America says it is. Um, and I just want to end uh, with you know, quoting MLK, a riot is the language of the unheard. And sadly, we're still fighting the civil rights movement. Sadly, um, we are still fighting these things that, oh God, I want to move past. And I get that. I get we want to move past. But guess what? The guy who once said that black people were too stupid to vote for him, Donald Trump, nah, he ain't it. He never said that. That's it. He never said that. You ain't black if you don't vote for me? Biden. 
Them, Trump never them's said my that. comments. Okay. Trump never no. said so that. So let's go to <laughs> the next topic. I didn't refer, review what you guys said. I didn't review what you guys said. Like, you guys it, said. Was just, it was just feisty. I mean, to give her credit, she's coming in late. So we appreciate you saying your comments. Even if I don't agree, I appreciate it. Well, look, I appreciate you even hearing because I'm the asshole that came in late. So look. I, <laughs> All right. Are we ready? Okay, let's hit the next one. Let's go. Uh, Donald Trump's tan looks really good on him. <laughs> Well, wow. wait, wait, who says that? <laughs> I would go, do you want to start with, I, I guess I can start with that one since I'm a, I love to spray tan. Trying to say um, something light. And Zach's small. like, we're going to, yeah, Zach's like, we're going to need some lightness here. Zach's like, let me pull it back a little bit. Um, <laughs> y'all going gluten free or? <laughs> so I think. Brittany, Brittany or Madonna. I think I would, I think I can give Donald Trump a few uh, spray tanning tips if, if I could. Abigail, do you have any? Any thoughts? Do you think that um, sh- sugar and bronze does a great spray tan? Sugar and bronze. Joy, yeah. do you have any plug. tips for for I, I have a natural. I have a natural tan, so I have to say melanin. You, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know anything about that spray tan life. <laughs> but I do like to spray tan my legs because I feel like my legs are never dark enough. So I use L'Oreal. Oh, pa- legs are always the pastiest part. I, feel I hate like, that. Sure. I'm like I just want to be even. Devin. <laughs> What do you want me to say? <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> are you a fan of his tan? Like hashtag, it's okay to be white. Uh, what? Uh, it's, okay to, it's okay to be orange. It's okay to be orange. It be orange. So wait, are we actually all on a, in agreement on one topic that this tan is not great? I don't do orange know, lives matter? It, do orange lives matter? I don't know it, why it's a tan. It looks really bad on TV. I met the president several times. It's not as bad in person. But I also, I don't... I don't understand the for the the behind the scenes of what why it's so orange. It's probably so the contrast that ups it. Yeah. All right. I don't I know. I, I wish I personally wish he would just be more natural. I don't see why tanning. He is He doesn't like, need it. No one needs a tan like. I don't know that. any of you. Be more natural tan, like, like me. Use your My skin. hair is all just, natural. You're natural, like Zach. me. This is natural too. Like I just I want your it. eyebrows, though, Zach. Those are freaking. I know his brows are the best. Uh, all right, guys. For days. Uh, back on topic, <laughs> plastic straws should be illegal. Oh, this God. is more to bring up environmental conversation. <laughs> Devin, do you want to tackle this one first? Sure. Um, I hate I mean, actually, I just want to say I have a glass straw right now. That's in, literally in LA and your paper straws <laughs> melting in my mouth. Stop yeah, it. That's one thing I will say is I hate the fucking p- paper straws because they Give are a metal awful. straw if you want one plastic. Don't be cheap. Um, Devin. Devin. So it'll work. So yeah, look, it's it's uh, it's it's a fact that plastics are just way out of control, and single-use plastics are way out of control. And you can see it on the beaches; like they're killing marine life. They're in the air now. Tiny little plastic particles are in the air. It's it's. We definitely have to reform our plastic use. They're um, in our genitals from all the propylaptic. Yeah, they're they're everywhere. They're um, inside us. Pa- paper straws don't exactly work, so that's not a solution. Um, and on top of all of that, the more I learn about pollution and um, negative climate impacts, it, it's gnarly. It's we like to take responsibility and say like well, I can stop using a couple plastic bags and I'm doing my part. But the vast majority of climate pollution is being done by like a hundred companies. And mm. it, it, it's being done by like businesses who aren't willing to change their practices. The vast majority, there's some report that it's like a hundred companies are responsible for mm. over 50% of the negative climate impacts that are happening. So as much as we want to take resp- responsibility as consumers in our individual life, um, if it doesn't start up there, then like it's not going to help anyways. I don't use fucking straws anyways, so I don't give a shit. I just <laughs> I don't just care. Don't give me a straw. I'll drink it with my mouth. Thank you. I'm I'm um, definitely one of those psychos who like I won't I will not drink like I have box water. If there's not box water, like I won't buy a plastic bottle. I have a Brita. respect and, and like but, respect but because I know we use way too much plastic. Right. But also, like, our day-to-day is not necessarily the huge issue here. And I don't think that it even should necessarily be a political issue. I think the media likes to turn it into one. Regardless of, like, what, exactly what side you're on, like, 
we have way more waste now than we did a hundred years ago. It's like, absurd. That's just like a non Just look at how much trash you throw out in a day. However, you can't solve a problem with another right. problem. And yeah. a paper straw is a problem. It's that's another problem. problem. <laughs> another problem. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I disagree. I, disagree. I disagree. No, Look, I you agree. drink faster. Drink your drink faster. <laughs> it goes to your head quicker. That's what you're doing anyway. Get crunked. <laughs> you, you do not let it sit there. Own that through the like flesh paper shot. straw and get I know. done with it. A bit like a shot. Just, just more of this. Who's my, man, my man is so he good. He carries straws. Like, what are you doing? My man's not even a conservative or anything. He's like, he just hates politics. He just doesn't want anything to do with it. He carries around a, a silver straw, you know. The metal, metal. ones, yeah. I'm going to use my vegan privilege, okay? I support the environment better than all of you. Oh, so here's God. what I'm going to say about this, though. I'm <laughs> you know what? I'm vegan. You know what? I, I, I'm, I'm recycle and I don't eat animals, so Mike no. is- you, my job. That's a huge. Just, that's a huge fucking part, though. Huge. Cow that's farms. Way, that's really way better. Oh, thank you. I, you guys, insane. I'm, I'm really big. The political aspect. I'm going to bring it up. It's going to get heated oh, again. Thank you. Um, quickly, really quickly. I'm all for, and Trump is all for. Um, you know, any great way we have of cleaning the air, cleaning the water, cleaning the this, cleaning that. He wants all of it. He wants all the ideas. No, he doesn't. Every, all the no, great, he doesn't. Yes. Well, okay. Well, this is what I've what I've read and what he's, what he talks about. Okay. okay. What, what he said, he wants all those things. He just does not want the government to have to mandate that these companies, they're forced to do something. The government that's going has to, to mandate this stuff. Otherwise no, companies they, they will mandate. just pour their shit everywhere. They do. Well, the government well, has to mandate not if the free market, environmental not reform. If, not if the free market decides not to buy the free market. And, <laughs> and we decide to buy I, something I gotta go. else. And no, if, Ricky, if really it's, love, a, it's no, a good point. Hey, it's a good, and it's if a good really point. Love, if you really, wait, wait, wait. If you really oh love your, God. Yeah, the you world. Broke Devin. Oh, you wait, broke wait, wait, Devin, wait, wait, Ricky. That's fine. I'm glad. I, if he really cared about the environment, he'd go after China. He'd go after China, the biggest polluters. That's they, true. They don't, they don't have true. to join. Wait a China minute. They don't have the to join the Paris. Why aren't they the joining the Paris Climate Accord deal? Because they don't want to screw up their economy. Okay. It hurts our economy to have all these regulations. That's fine. That's fine. But he needs to go after China, India. And, and other and great polluters. Okay, I am not so disagreeing with you. You are a hundred percent correct. Let him, let, him China, fin- let him finish. China and India are huge, but how do you let expect me finish? Let me the free finish. market to work. I don't think I was done. I don't think I was done. But the, but the point is, like, we want we want like all the great ideas, the geniuses of the. There was a one boy who came up with a way of like scooping up everything. Remember, of scooping up all the stuff from the oceans. Like this young man, a genius idea. There, you know, there are great ways that we can help our environment. Okay. Yeah, it failed sadly. Without without breaking the bank, it without failed. breaking our economy and taking away cows and airplanes like the Green New Deal. That's ridiculous. Yeah, the Green New Deal is just absolutely good. out of control. It's so stupid. What you can't have cows anymore, or you have to, you know, or you can't fly anymore. It's so dumb. Okay. It has to come we have to come up with ways I that do don't do not to... hurt our economy. Yeah, like, I agree. Drastically. I think, though, mass farming of animals though is contributing. It's disgusting. To and it is cruelty. I mean, I'm very liberal on this topic. It's funny because I do agree with Ricky that that the Green New Deal was just absolute BS. It didn't help anyone. <laughs> but I also believe that we can't like I have a lot of Republican fans that are like, You're vegan, what kind of animal is that? You need to support the ranchers <laughs> and the farmers and you know you know I'm like, No, sorry, I'm vegan sixteen years and counting, so I have a six pack and I, I love it. I don't eat my animal <laughs> friends. But I I joke when I'm like I should have a superior superiority. I don't believe I'm better than meat eaters. But if we have a more vegan, friendly, and and the cruelty of animal farming and the mass, it's not the, it's not the local ranchers that are no, but that's hurting the local ranchers. It's, it's huge, right, Abby? It's like it, the, it hurts the economy the having, from having that. That are Tyson subsidized yeah, by the exactly. government, which is exactly. not a free market. That's exactly. I mean, Devin brings up a really good point. I, I guess I just want to weigh in that I know that the Green New Deal has been sold and described as Marxism and socialism. I do just want to say, though, that for ranchers, for people who like coal miners who have not been, look, there's no more, there's no more left to mine. There's no protections for those miners. And even those, con- those counties and those um, towns in like Appalachia, they're like, yeah, no, it's dead. It's a done and dying industry. I don't know why Trump wants to bring it back. The Green New Deal's idea is basically to say everyone, not only can we 
actually transition off of fossil fuels and transition away from this much meat production and in the ways that we do it, not that meat is done forever, but that actually we can create good jobs doing it. That doesn't mean it's a government mandated job. That doesn't mean you have to do it. It doesn't mean these coal miners are going to be in a line having to do this job. It means, look, there's a good paying green energy job available for you, whether it's in solar, whether it's in wind, whether it's in transitioning farming to regenerative farming, which actually helps the soil because as it is now, soil, you can do like two or three with like soy or whatever other GMO crop you have, and then it's dead. It's done. And even worse, like what you're saying with when it comes to animals and feedlots and such. So actually the Green New Deal is pretty brilliant and pretty awesome because it is about workers matter. The economy matters. A quality of life, our air, our water, all matter. And it's a, so it's a win-win. So here's like this plan. So uh, people I wish who sell it you was. on Marxism and socialism, just try to, try to pull yourself us, back from that. Extract yourself from that put thinking. Put us in debt. Eating the economy. It's put us in it, debt. It's good on paper, but not behind. We got to do something cool. that's, that's better than the green. I <laughs> wish Obama it, promised jobs. Obama promised jobs when he started all that green stuff. And, and it's like <laughs> nobody. It was awful. It was a disaster. Oh, nobody, yeah, earned yeah, yeah. nobody earned more money off of that. That's okay. BS. So, so, the Green New Deal is BS. Let's move to the next heated debate. <laughs> okay. so we, you guys are amazing. Putting up with all our Thank you both. So we Thank have one so more. And this last one is we should have a national mask mandate. So I'll start with this one and then we'll again round table. We should have a national mask mandate. Oh I think this is a really hard one. Like, look at this is why I'm also like very much I'm not against I mean, I'm not for a national mandate. I don't love mandates. I don't love when the government tries to tell me what I need to do with my own body and my health or that the government or that anybody thinks that I am not responsible enough to yeah. try and limit anybody else's exposure to, you know, COVID or whatever. Right. I agree, Zach. I don't agree with a national mask mandate. And that's where I stand. Abigail, how about you? <laughs> Um, I think that I don't know shit about science. So like, I just want to listen to the scientists and let them tell me what to do. And the issue with scientists, though, is there are scientists on both sides. Science is always developing. Science is always developing. There are scientists. I'm just giving you my opinion. We do need a mask. Yeah. No, I'm not not disagreeing with you. Wait, wait, wait. Am I, am I supposed to, this is my turn to say, let Abigail finish. (laughs) <laughs> I don't. I don't think she even just finished. What she was I doing. fucked that one up. Thank you, Francesca. Hey, go ahead. That's good. That was funny. That was okay. Funny. Okay. I'm not. I'm not disagreeing. Like I, things have been yes and no, and I get yelled at every time I go to Equinox because somehow my mask rides down my face, and like I get pissed, and I can't blow dry my hair in public, and like I got it. But also, like I don't know shit, so I, I, I'm gonna do whatever is told is going to make me safe whether or not it does or doesn't at least like I won't have any uh regrets that if I didn't chose not to do something and someone got sick or something like I think my like mental well-being for me is just more important um down the road that's where I'm at I think it provides more of a um (sighs) like ease to the anxiety to like think and feel like we're doing something a lot greater than the mask is actually providing. Joy, how do you feel? Oh my God. I, lo- I love Abigail. Love the sweatshirt you're wearing. Love it's red, white, and blue. Love Thank that you. You, you know, you're just a sweetheart and you're like, listen, I don't want it, you know. But the problem is, this is, it's, I absolutely believe with Zach, uh, agree with Zach because it's mass control. You know, I mean, my body, my choice. Hello. Just, we know how to wash our hands. I don't have a problem with washing your hands. Are you pro choice? Cover your cough. You know, I don't have a problem with that. But uh, what I do have a problem with is saying that we now have to cover our faces with masks when there is no, there's no conclusive evidence. Dr. Fauci said, you don't need to wear masks. And I was like, oh, just kidding. We do need to wear masks. I mean, there's so much conflicting data. You know, two weeks to slow the spread. Woo, welcome to six months. Six months of our two weeks to slow the spread. The economy is crashing because of it, although it's still doing better than it was under Obama without a pandemic, mm-hmm. I have to say, during this time. Truth, facts, look it up. Work, 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 work. Jobs work. Are, are being lost. 
lost. Uh, suicide rates are up. Depression is up. You know, I mean, it's insane. This hasn't done anything. And then, then the CDC quietly says, oh, just kidding. It was only 6% of the deaths that were actually due to COVID without any underlying causes. This is not a deadly disease. This is a disease that has a 99% chance of survival. You do not <laughs> lock up the entire planet for something okay. like that. You do not do this. It's ridiculous. We didn't do it for SARS. We didn't do it for um, Ebola. We didn't do it for AIDS. We didn't do it for a myriad of other diseases that killed arguably more people than this. And yet somehow this is an excuse with fear. Now, listen, I'm not going to mask shame you if you want to wear a mask, but like, don't tell me I have to wear a mask. And that's why I'm moving out of California because other states are opening up. And meanwhile, you know, Governor uh, Newsom, dictator Newsom is like, no, we're not. We're going to keep it all locked down until we find a cure for death. Devin. I, I don't even I don't even know what to say to all that. Uh, well, well th then don't respond to Joy. But how did you feel about how do you feel about a mass and national mass mandate? <laughs> um, I don't I, I don't know enough of the science either. Um, so I don't know, man. Uh, I don't know. That that's where I'm at. Like, and I feel like that's where a bunch of the science is at. It's, it's okay not to know. know. Learning. That's actually a very brave statement, Devin. Um, it's okay not to know. You know. Yeah, I think it's better well, to say. You. Yeah, um, I think it's better to say I don't know than to fake I, knowing. I agree. I wish yeah, more people I, would do that. Just yeah, like Alex also said, uh, I don't know about the science. Uh, like, it's okay. Go ahead. go ahead, Devin. Yeah, on on this on particularly on mass and whatever. I mean. I don't know. And the science is still unfolding. They don't know. Like, that's why it's been so uneven is it's a new virus that they're trying to study and figure out and trying to mitigate risk on. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll listen though, because the risk, it, it concerns me. Yeah. 99% of people will survive it, but what about that 1% and 200,000 people have that? What about car accidents? Should we, I think we, we should wear seatbelts. We have but to no, wear I mean, seatbelts or we get a ticket. We, we have to wear seatbelts or we get it. Can we, I, can we, I just jump in? Cause I feel yeah, like, please, I like, in, I respect, I, again, I respect everyone's opinion to have an now. opinion. I just feel like we're, we're talking about an issue that is incredibly serious. And I think it is a disservice to have misinformation around this. This virus is absolutely real. The stat around 6% of people died from it out of, you know, you know, and only six percent of people actually yeah, died of COVID. Not even that is BS. Stuff. That is that real. Is not, that is not science. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, Joy. Please ahead, stop because ahead, your friends. misinformation ahead. will and has gotten it people killed. It, it continues to get people killed. No, it, it the United, real. hang on, it's hang on, real. hang on, stop. 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 The United stop. States stop. is com behind. We are number one in deaths. We are behind on this. South people. Korea no, has gotten this under control. All right. China has gotten this under control. India or China? No, 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 no. These the other countries. And guess China what? Guess their what? Their hang on, hang on. Let me finish. Camps. Let me finish. Let me finish. Hold on. Hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish. They died of starvation. Okay. Here. China threw them. <laughs> China hang locked hang them up. In Why isn't she allowed, allowed to starvation? Talk. Let me just finish saying this. Yeah, yeah. If we I know it's gonna... hard. I know it's hard to care about other China people dying. I know it's hard to care okay. about people dying. Let me just say that masks have nothing to do with this. Want to know why? Because other countries are better at three things: contact tracing. You know who has been infected, when and where, and you find people, and you're able to say, "Hey, you've been infected. You you need to." quarantine. Here we have a hotel you can stay in for free. You can quarantine here for two weeks. Make sure you are safe. Other countries are. They are contact tracing. They are quarantining. And they are testing. We still do not have a national testing plan. However, many months we are into this thing. And absolutely the science, it doesn't, we don't know. We don't have a cure. There is no vaccine. It is not on the way. Okay. So three things that don't involve masks, that we still can't do because this president is not able to utilize, he's not able to get his head out of his own butt and oh, to care God. about actual Americans dying. He prefers to go with all of this BS myth-making 
And meanwhile, black and brown people, you talk about black and brown people right are the ones who are dying. The CDC more is than that anyone. Correct. And the that's CDC it. That's said all I will say. Percent of those deaths can, come from COVID right. without okay. an underlying. I, I haven't spoken. I just got to say, I haven't spoken. You have a right to your own opinion, but do not call the CDC line. I mean, what? What? You're mis. You're misrepresenting. How woke can you be when you? Hold on. Let me just answer that. Hold on. I am misrepresenting. To be fair, I gave you a chance to answer. We want. I want to give Ricky an opportunity to briefly interject. One thing. No, Devin, you already allocated your time. You don't know. Hold on. You've answered. Okay. Hold on. Hold on, guys. 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 Everybody will have a chance to respond. I just want Ricky to be able to to weigh in here very briefly, please, Ricky. Okay. Here we go. China is to blame. Okay. It was a bioweapon. It was manufactured in a lab, and they released it. This is my opinion. I'm allowed to have my opinion. For I'm sure. a free American. I could say they're aliens abducting this world. <laughs> it was a bioweapon. It was a bioweapon released during the election, before the election, so that they would have this problem to cripple our economy so that people would think that it's Trump's fault. This is not Trump's fault. You have to blame China and their government, okay? First of all. Second of all, this mask thing is ridiculous. If you want to wear a mask, you should be able to wear a mask. If you want to wear a hazmat suit, you should wear a hazmat suit everywhere you go. But to tell people how to live their lives is wrong all the time, okay? That's freaking wrong because we've had diseases since the dawn of mankind. We've survived all of them. Scarlet fever, uh, H1N1, AIDS, and every single mm -hmm. other, you know, freaking thing that's supposed to kill us. We didn't, we didn't stop the whole world and the economy right. for it. This is a political game, and it's not going to win. We're still going to vote Trump in. No matter what you say or do, we're going to vote him in in Does November. He leave? And, and yeah, no, no, no. He's gonna stay because we're gonna vote him in, girl. And, and right. this, this, this what thing, if, what if this virus. What if he loses? Then, wait, a minute, wait a minute, I'm not digging. Listen, if you want to wear a mask everywhere you go, go. If you're too terrified, you shouldn't be going out of your house. You should lock yourself in your room, get DoorDash for the rest of your life. But the rest of us, we want America to open up. We want to go to work. Okay, we right. want to work. We want everybody to stop this BS. Okay. Yes, people die, but people have been dying since the dawn of time of diseases, okay? Period. You know, I think we all get caught up in the minutia of it all. I think I agree with Devin. I agree with Francesca. I agree with Joy. Ricky, there were even a couple of things that you said that I agreed with as well. Um, <laughs> it was me. Well, you don't, don't agree with me? Was, oh, yeah. Oh, I, agree with oh, you. Oh, <laughs> I always agree with you. Can Can I just answer this statistical okay. CDC Come thing on, real quick? You gave away your time. No, the, I think I know what you're going to say. During okay. everyone's time. Okay. What are you talking about? Hold on. The 6%. Okay. I'm using my black privilege. Oh, I thought it was oppressed though, Devin. It's Sorry. Don't okay. The 6%, okay. the 6 CDC thing that they came out and said, six, it was 6% of deaths of only COVID. COVID. With, with that, that's no what I said. Head. That's exactly Hold what she on. said. Hold that's on. exactly what I said, Devin. The rest Hold were underlying on. causes, which you I'll can't just, say. I'll just I never, if I have cancer I'll just never and I get finish. COVID, you can't say you I'll died just, of COVID. Okay. I'll just Roll it back. Finish. Roll back the tape. Okay. Roll back the Bye. tape. You'll see she said that. And then the CDC quietly says, oh, just kidding. It was only 6% of the deaths that were actually due to COVID without any underlying causes. That's what I okay. said, Devin. Okay, Devin, go ahead. We good? I'm giving you an, go point? ahead, go ahead. Without any response, I'll let you go ahead this, and. The 6% stat of saying only COVID, you're saying, you're representing that as saying only 6% of people have, have died of COVID. That's what with... CDC says. Joy, let's mm -hmm. let him. Wait, no, no, he's addressing that. me. You Wait, won't even let me say, you let, won't even let me finish me. my thought. I should be able to talk. Are, no, no, you're talking no, to the whole group? No. Finish. You're talking to me. Okay. I'm responding to my question. So just I'm, like in Congress, I, I, I can I'm say gonna, what I, I can respond go. to you. Drew, Drew, I just want him muting. to finish his thoughts. This is absurd. We're having a conversation, Devin. No, we're Don't have a temper tantrum just because <laughs> oh a black woman God. who's not I, acting I, oppressed is oh going to respond to you. Oh, God. Oh, oh God. God. Oh, God. Okay. So, okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Joy, hold on. That's okay. so sad. Okay. That's so, so if they had a... Hold on. Hold on. If they had a respiratory illness or something like that that could be maintained and then they got COVID and died, those are not being put into the same group. Or if is COVID, what you're saying. I'm saying, or if COVID caused right. them to have pneumonia and they died right. from pneumonia, pneumonia caused by COVID, that's outside the 6%. Right. If COVID caused some other shit that they had to flare up, yes, it's not only the COVID that killed them, their death certificate might not even say COVID. It might say whatever, pulmonary heart failure or whatever. But 
but it's being caused by the virus that's in them. And that's from the CDC. Can I, can I just if say, really- can I just say that's, that's really good. And I, I want to say it is scary. Like, I feel like we need to understand that we are in an unprecedented time, apolitically, completely devoid of politics, that this is a virus that should not be politicized. And our leaders have failed us by politicizing it, right? Agreed. And so and, and the fact is, we don't know, and it is scary, and no one has the answer. And, in, and it is hard because it is stalt, uh, stalting the economy, stopping the economy, right? And everyone does want to get back to work and back to school, but we also want to not die. No, you don't. So no, those, you don't. You want to... You want an economy that sucks. Hang on, hang on. Blame it all on Trump. No, no, you're I'm not liar. saying you're a liar. Us, you don't have to be. Liar. I am not. I, I am just yeah. saying that. Can we appreciate Listen, how I gotta go. I to this moment thank is? You, Zach, thank you, Abigail. So nice go to too. see Ricky. You're my boy. Nice. I gotta to go too. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Honestly, thanks, Ricky. Thank Joy's you done, you guys. Joy's Bye, done. You guys. I love you guys. Thank, thank you so much. Joy's done. Joy's thank you so much. Oh my God. So Can you guys Ricky. please record like an intro to that? Because I think you need to clarify for your listeners, just maybe fact from fiction. I think that's it's pretty irresponsible to put all of that out without actually having a fact check. I mean, uh, I, okay. I agree. That 6% stat is such a misrepresentation. It's, it's of bullshit. That, of what that yes. report was. Okay, so I guess I'll sit on the conservative side here. So oh I think God, I you know. So I agree with all of you guys, but I also think at the same time, like it's such uncharted territory that the hard part is you have people on both sides that are very they have very strong convictions, and we need to know that like next week this is all very likely to change the same way it's changed over the past six months, and we just need to one allow there to be some flexibility for us to continue to learn and to grow and to take precautions. Like I don't agree with this being like a whole political stunt to get I don't think the world is plotting against Trump here I don't think that's that absurd. that's I think that is a very like uh oh he's back oh hi Rick hi Ricky if we need to <laughs> hi guys sorry I um I have a little more time before my next okay interview. so we're we're just okay. closing out the conversation right now and so what I want everybody to do I'm very appreciative. Abigail and I are both very appreciative that everybody came on here today, shared their opinion, thoughts, perspectives, and feelings. And so what we really want people to do is go out, brief themselves on the issues, and ultimately, come November, go out and vote. So what we want to do to close it out, we'll start with Devin Francesca, and then or we can start with you, Ricky, because I know you're a little shorter on time. Just with yeah. one kind of closing argument, a quick, concise closing argument of why people need to go out and vote. Not necessarily who they need to vote for but why it's important for them to exercise their right to vote ricky do you want to kick it off sure um we have this great thing uh called you know uh democracy and and the election and we get to have a have a voice a say and uh you know you should use your voice you should use that uh, ability to speak your mind don't do violence don't go out and hurt people and um you know, don't try, try to use your voice in a positive way. And the positive way you could do that is by voting and, and really looking at the issues and, and try to look at both sides. I know that I came across probably pretty strong um, on certain things, but I have investigated both sides. I really honestly have. And I've come to the conclusions that I have come to because I was on a certain side, like far left. And I went into a certain, a different direction. Okay. But that's because I did my research and I, you know, looked into a lot of things and this is what my heart said to vote for. So go with what you, you know, what you, what you feel is right, but also take the time to really do the research and listen to multiple platforms, not just left leaning platforms, but right leaning platforms and middle of the ground platforms and, and banned platforms and, uh, and, you know, super popular, not banned platforms, whatever. Do your research with different, different uh, on the issues because faith news is going to try it'll they lie to you they lie to us constantly and we're in an information war okay and it's very 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 difficult to find out what is true and false but you have to you have to do the research to do that to figure Thank it out ricky francesca why should people go out and exercise their right to vote uh, I just want to say that uh, there is a difference between a real news source and a real journalist and people who uh, have conspiracy theories online I should know I'm a YouTube star uh, B-list internet celebrity, as I like to say. Uh, my my pieces are incredibly well-researched. 
but then I have jokes and they're opinion based. So make sure that not only do you listen to and watch and read a lot of things, but that who you're, who you're listening to and who you're reading, that they're actual journalists, that they go out and they talk to people, that they talk to experts, that they talk to scientists, that they talk to pollsters, that they talk to politicians, that they understand how things work. They don't just sort of think about like, hey, what if, you know, there was a, a pizza parlor that ran a child sex trafficking ring in the basement, things like that, you know, fact and fiction, things like that. Um, look, this is why you should vote because politicians don't want you to. They really don't, especially if you're young, if you're a person of color, if you're an immigrant, please stay home, don't vote. The whole system is, is crap anyway. That's how they win. I know a lot of people are disaffected by this political system. I do believe that we can um, vote better people into office and, uh, and put pressure on them to actually represent where the majority of Americans are in this country, um, which is believing in healthcare for all, which is believing that climate change is real and that we have to and must do something about it, which is believing that there should be a social safety net and that people deserve jobs and people deserve unions and to be well paid and for a raise in the minimum wage. Um, and just just in basic quality of life issues like that. So definitely vote because otherwise uh, some disgusting rich old white person will take your vote from you. Devin? Um, our right to vote has been suppressed and taken its power away um, for a long time. There's voter suppression tactics that are going on now uh, on top of an electoral college that's outdated. Um, so it's hard for me to say voting is like the answer, right? Because our individual one vote, one voice doesn't exist and our vote is in trouble. However, it is, it is one of the ways we as citizens have any stake in this game that is being corrupted day in and day out by by people in power, by people who can afford to write laws for their own benefit, by businesses who can afford to corrupt politicians for their own benefit. So um, we have to vote um, and we have to vote for people who want to make democracy more of a democracy. Candidates who understand the electoral college is outdated, candidates who understand that we need a reformed Medicare for all system. We need a reformed policing system. We need, we need change in this country. What happens in our individual lives when you avoid feedback is your life goes into chaos. When negative feedback comes at you in your individual life and you don't change something, then you know what happens. Your life starts spiraling downwards. America avoids feedback because there are people who benefit from it staying the same. And so they try and get you not to vote and they try and get things to stay the same because they're above it all. They make money no matter what. So we have to try, try and vote and try and course correct this country towards a better ideal, a better society, something a little more humane. <laughs> Thank you, Devin. Where can people follow you on social media, Devin? Uh, Devin Work Harder, W E R K H A R D E R, um, at, on Instagram, Twitter. Um, Devin Workheiser is my name. You could Google me. Uh. <laughs> Francesca, where can people follow you? Done and done. I follow Devin um, at <laughs> Franny Fio, F R A N I F I O, on Instagram and Twitter. Love it. And Ricky, where can people go and follow you? You can follow me at Ricky Rebel Rocks on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and my website, www.rickyrebelrocks.com. I love it. And even though she did tap out early, you can follow Joy at Joy Vila, V I L L A. And she has a new, her book out is called uh, Kick Ass Conservative. So if you want to read a little more, you can check out her book and be sure to follow all of our amazing panelists today. Thank you guys for coming, sharing your thoughts, getting so passionate. Um, and thank you for not flipping any tables today. Mm -hmm. We appreciate <laughs> it. Thanks, Zach. And have a good <laughs> thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Bye, Bye guys. Sorry for being here, y'all. Thank you. Okay, so how are you feeling about how that went? I think it went better than I expected. It I went do. very, it, it, it went, it got a little spicier than I was expecting. And see, but, I think, I think we were both expecting different ends of the spectrum and I think it met in the middle. So I, I'm happy with it. I think my Trump joke felt a little flat though. 
<laughs> with Devin. He didn't like that very much. I am, Devin was like over it. Devin was over it. I think I'm glad that everybody came in and tried for the most part to be as respectful as I think they were able to be. Think, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's hard too to be uh, respectful without feeling disrespected. Yeah. It's like it's a it's a fine line there on, on your on especially on opinions and, and things like that. But no, I think everyone I think if you listen to this show and you listen to this episode, you're gonna learn a lot and you're gonna see pick up be able to pick up certain things about, you know, parties, political, where their stances are on things. Yeah. And I think it was it was super informative and entertaining. So I feel like, yeah, it was entertaining, it was informative, and I hope everybody can leave this conversation going out and making an informed vote this November. Yes. Go out and vote. That's really what we want you to do. Go out 100%. and vote. Encourage other people in your community to go, to go out and vote. I feel like we say go out and vote, but there are also a lot of people like, go out and vote, but vote for what I want you to vote for. And we need to be able to, you know, allow people to have their own POVs, even if we don't agree with them, which is why I really like yes. today's conversation. I didn't agree with everything. <laughs> There were we're never going to agree with everything, you know? Yeah. But and I that's think part of voting. That's, that's part, part of, voting of voting is choosing who you agree with the most or choosing your most important topics and choosing who you vote for based on where those uh, opinions align. I agree. Do you have any yeah. closing thoughts, remarks, anything else you want to add in? Uh, no. <laughs> I think we said enough. I think we've said enough. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for listening to Adulting with myself and Abigail. You can give me a follow at Just Plain Zach if you want to keep up with me. And you can follow me at Abigail double underscore AF. Don't forget to follow at The Adulting Podcast and go to theadultingpodcast.com. We have all the links there to our Roku channel, to our Spotify channel, to our iTunes channel. So go and subscribe to us and leave us a nice five star review so that we can keep doing really crazy panels like this. Yes. All right, guys, until next time, we'll be hashtag adulting. Bye.